Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about my worst luxury purchases of 2021 and I feel like I got kind of lucky because I did a lot of shopping last year and I don't feel like I had too many bad purchases. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'm getting slightly better at shopping with age, um, but I don't feel like I had like a ton of duds. That said, I did have some purchases which I do recognize probably weren't my most successful and some which were just a little bit disappointing for me in one way or another. So that is what I'm going to be covering here today. I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get started. So first up is my Chanel Classic Flap and it pains me to include this bag in this video but this bag hasn't been quite everything that I wanted and I was super excited when I first got it and I love white coloured bags, you guys will know that if you watch my channel regularly and I also love my Chanel bags as well but I did end up getting colour transfer on this bag even with being very very careful and I'm not going to lie that really kind of dampened my experience and my enthusiasm for using the bag just because it was so much money that now I can't help but be a little bit scared and you know I am no stranger to having white bags in my collection I am no stranger to protecting against color transfer as well I know all the tips and tricks and I do it all but even with me being very very careful I still ended up getting color transfer on this bag so it happened when I went to London during a trip and I was actually wearing just a simple black midi dress it was one I got from the Nordstrom anniversary sale thought I'd be totally fine because it was just like a jersey dress, nothing that would really kind of flag out to me as something that would cause color transfer. Wore this crossbody all day long, not even thinking about it. And then when I got to the hotel that night, I saw a massive black stain on the back and I was absolutely horrified. And I think it happened on the first night we were there as well. So I didn't have any cleaning materials with me. I rushed out to get some baby wipes, but it didn't really do the job. So that was my first priority when I got back here and I did manage to remove most of it, thank goodness. I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick it up, but I definitely still have a little bit of kind of transfer right there on the top of the pocket. And in certain lights, you can also see it on the wider pocket as well and I'm not gonna lie it just kind of scared me a little bit and a lot of my other white bags I don't necessarily wear crossbody in that way you know often I wear them top handle that wasn't really the case with this style you know it is something that I do wear on the shoulder either kind of doubled up or lengthways and I also was wearing it crossbody as well never crossed my mind in a million years that I would have to worry about just a simple jersey dress but just go show you that any dark materials really can color transfer onto something like this and a jersey dress is just not something I would consider color locking you can absolutely do that with your denim you know I do it often with Scotch Guard, Colonel Pro you know both those are great for making sure the dye doesn't leak from your jeans but you just can't do it with every single piece of clothing and so for that reason Whilst I still love it, I'm now always very kind of conscious of what I wear. I look at what I wear and I do wear a lot of dark colors and there's always that big question mark of, is it gonna cause color transfer even if I am careful? And I don't just wanna be able to wear this, you know, in my hand. I like popping it on my shoulder both ways. And so for that reason, I do love it, but I am just a little bit more cautious with it. So definitely a mixed one. Um, you know, I should have probably known that going into it. But as I said, I have so many white bags with no issues at all that I just didn't think I'd have to be that careful. And so that was a big lesson. So if I had to again, I think I probably still would go for it. I wouldn't ever consider lambskin at all. That's really kind of um, further solidified that decision for me. But definitely a bit of a mixed bag and definitely a lot of regrets about wearing that dress with this bag. And so yeah, Still love it, but a bit of a disappointment in that way. Next up is my Chloe Woody Toe, and I wanna be very, very clear in that I still absolutely love this bag, and I love pretty much the whole line, but I'm fairly familiar with a lot of the Woody Toe line now, and since getting my other one, I would say that my preference is 100% clear. So I kind of wanted to include this just for anyone else considering this line of bags and trying to decide which one to go for. They've released a whole ton of new styles for the coming spring summer season. And I anticipate the line is going to be very popular for at least the next year. Um, so I kind of wanted to mention this one in relation to my other tote bag. So this is the other style that I have, which is the uh, larger kind of more canvas one. And I absolutely love this when I first got it. I still do really like it. It, but since owning this one I definitely would say if you are comparing the two I would definitely say that this one is my favorite one for a whole myriad of reasons um, one it's very very practical very comfortable 
but I'd also say that the two big factors for me are one, it's much more hard wearing than this one. You know, I only use this a few times, but even so, I can see bits of wear and tear already just in those few times of use. You know, the weave isn't quite as structured as it was. It does seem to get a little bit misshapen. It's just generally not as sturdy a bag as my other one. And I've used this one a ton, like a lot more than I've used this. And this one looks as good as the day I got it. So in terms of wear and tear, this one is far more robust. I'd also say it's a little bit more versatile as well. You know, I got this during the colder months. I've happily used it during the winter months. But I also think it's going to work great as a summer tote. Whereas this one, it really was only good for those really kind of warm summer days. We didn't have that many last year, unfortunately, which is why this one got limited use. But this one, just a little bit more seasonal in nature, as I mentioned, more kind of susceptible to wear and tear, whereas this one, more robust, more seasonless as well, happy to wear this any given month of the year, and I just think this one's great. So I do still like this one for sure, but if you were trying to decide between the two, I would definitely say this one isn't nearly as good as my very, very robust larger one. Next up is my Tom Ford belt, and you guys will know I'm a huge fan of belts, whether that's luxury or not. I think they're such a fantastic accessory to really pull together your entire look and outfit. I own a few different luxury ones now, and I would say I got my Tom Ford one, I think it was like February last year, um, and this is by far my least favorite luxury belt, and it was the most expensive as well. And I have one Saint Laurent belt now, I have two Valentino ones, and then I have a Louis Vuitton one as well. This one was, I think, price it's like 550 pounds I did get it on a discount but even so it was more expensive than all my other ones and I just don't like it as much I don't think that the quality is actually as high as my other styles even my Saint Laurent belt which I have here in the white color um, so this one is just kind of this really skinny belt and I think this one is the least expensive of all the styles Still absolutely a luxury one, um, but it is more affordable than, for example, the Louis Vuitton belt. But the leather is much thicker. It's also kind of more malleable, but in a good way as well. So you don't get any wrinkling when you do wrap it around. And it's just been very robust. And I lost count of the number of times that I've worn this belt. Like it's gotten a ton of use ever since I got it. And I think I've had this now for maybe two years. Very robust, done extremely well, still looks absolutely fantastic, especially considering how much I've worn it. Whereas this belt, it just feels a little bit more flimsy. It's not nearly as thick as my other belts, and it almost feels a little bit plasticky on the other side. The leather is fine, but again, there isn't a lot of substance to it. And honestly, if you told me it was like half the price of the other ones, I would still be like, oh, okay, that's quite expensive for what it is. I love the logo and the colorway. I do think it's beautiful, but I do kind of notice and feel the difference when I go to put it on. And most of the time I will just reach for either my Valentino one if I do want something a little bit more nude in color or otherwise my skinny Saint Laurent belt. And those are by far my two favorite belt styles. Love my Louis Vuitton one as well. Um, but yeah, I'd say especially for the price, I do think that there are better belt options out there than the Tom Ford one. It's a beautiful logo. It is a really lovely style to look at, but I just don't think the quality is there in terms of the actual material. Next up is a bag that I don't actually have here with me because I did part ways with this one, but it is the Saint Laurent Tote. And I got this, I think it was a uh, spring last year, and to be honest, it didn't last very long in my collection because I got it just shortly after I got my Tom Ford Tote. And for me, it was immediately clear kind of once I started using them both that they were pretty much the same bag in terms of function in my wardrobe. And I just don't go away enough to justify both of them. So I did end up selling my Saint Laurent one, and I did mention before kind and my reasons why um, but it just wasn't as functional as my Tom Ford tote and especially as I get older I feel like my focus is more and more on functionality and pieces which really just make my life easier rather than being like an annoying accessory you know I have no interest in things which are just difficult or awkward to use and I just felt like even though the Saint Laurent tote was very beautiful to look at I love the style and I do feel like it's a little bit edgy in terms of what it is 
it just wasn't that comfy to wear. Um, the straps were very, very stiff indeed. They weren't very comfortable as a result to pop on your shoulder. And the bag also didn't kind of pop out very easily as well. So its natural resting shape was flatter. And so it didn't just kind of sit really naturally. You had to really stuff it full. And overall, it was just slightly more awkward experience in terms of carrying it. Whereas my Tom Ford tote, even though it's not super structured and robust, which I do think would bother some people, I love the fact that it is is very comfy. I just sling it on my shoulder as well. It's good to carry by hand and it's just a very like malleable piece of almost luggage I say because I do use it as an overnight style and it's just very functional and very very easy to wear. So for that reason definitely I knew as soon as I kind of compared them both and used them both on trips away I was like wow there is no contest. I tried to encourage myself to use my Saint Laurent tote more but every time I was about to go away I was like you know what I just want to be comfortable I have something functional so I would always grab my Tom Ford tote so definitely for me like function is so so crucial and the Tom Ford tote just wasn't quite as comfortable as I was hoping for. Next up is my Mulvary Mini Alexa in the darker brown color. And this one's a little bit of a mixed bag because if you've watched any of my videos, you will know how much I absolutely love my white one. I've gone on about it a lot. And even though it hasn't done like super well in terms of wear and tear, I still absolutely love it. I still use it all the time. And I would say it's one of my favorite bags in my collection at the moment. I thought that love would carry right through to this one, but it really hasn't happened and I do think it is to do, well, it's obviously to do with the color because I love my other style so much. And even though I do have other brown tones in my bag collection, which do get a lot of use, you know, I love my little Fendi shoulder bag. I love my Senrev Arias, but they are a little bit lighter in tone. I do think that has a lot to do with it. I'm not someone who really gravitates towards a lot of warm tones in general. You know, I love my camel coat, but even so, like everything is a little bit more on the lighter side. So I don't wear a lot of dark brown colors. So whenever I'm really gravitating towards camel or tan tones, I will either reach for a lighter brown color or I'll go for something like my white mini Alexa. So I wasn't really ever reaching for this one. And I did try and team this with so many different outfits, but every time I would just go for something lighter or I'd go for my white mini Alexa. So I do regret getting this colorway. Um, I am eyeing up all their beautiful new season colors. So if I do go for one, then I will part ways with this one. I am happy to have too many Alexas in my bag wardrobe because I do just feel I will get so much use out of it if I get the color right. But I think this shade was just a little bit too dark for my wardrobe and that I definitely need to remember to veer a lot more towards kind of lighter, more tan shades in future. Next up is my Cartier bracelet. And this is actually something that I got for my birthday. I got this one along with the matching necklace. And the necklace, I absolutely love. It is so beautiful and really like the perfect layering piece. So I would wholeheartedly recommend that. Um, the bracelet, I hadn't gone along with quite as well. And to be honest, it's purely like a functional thing. I did specifically want to mention this because I wanted to get your guys' opinions. Um, so I have quite a skinny wrist. And so I have to loop it on to the smallest setting which does result in this kind of drop down right here and it just annoys me like it annoys me so much and I'm not used to wearing um, bracelets with this kind of drop down usually I will have my bangle on even my Missima bracelet like it kind of fits really neatly so I don't have that excess bit and I thought it was just a case of just getting used to it you know oh it's just it keeps catching my eye because I'm not used to it whereas now that I've had it for quite a few months, that's not the case. I just find it really, really annoying and I can't seem to get used to it. So I was wondering if any of you are familiar with, well, more familiar with jewelry in general or just kind of Cartier pieces like this. Is there any way that I can remove this if I take it to them so I can just like have the Cartier symbol but on the smaller setting because as it stands, I don't really like to wear this that much because it just annoys me and I'm always quite excited to take it off, which isn't really what I want from something this expensive. I love the look of it. I think it's such a beautiful dainty bracelet, but I just can't seem to get used to how annoying I find the dangle. It kind of tickles my wrist as well. I do move my hands a lot when I'm typing. And yeah, I just don't like it. So if you know, please let me know in the comments whether it is or isn't possible. Um, if not, I think it's just going to be one of those pieces that I wear occasionally rather than all the time, um, but I did really want it as a daily bracelet. So I'm hoping I can still turn this one into a success, um, but at the moment, definitely a little bit of a disappointment. I didn't think that this would bother me nearly as much as it has, um, but yeah, definitely hasn't quite lived up to all my expectations. 
And then last but not least, I do have my Dior shoes. And this wasn't actually a purchase from last year, but I feel like last year with all the lockdowns, the pandemic was the first year that I really had a proper chance to wear them. And yeah, I don't really love these as much as I thought I would. And I'm very aware that I'm not someone who generally likes a statement shoe. I tend to go very simple and very boring with my shoes because I just like simple pumps and shoes that are just going to blend into my outfit and kind of accent my outfit rather than being the standout feature. So I knew that I very rarely go for a proper statement shoe. And even then they tend to be more on a classic design. My favorite shoes are usually ones that just kind of disappear into the outfit. But that said, I thought this one would be different because it is a fairly simple design still. You know, it's a very classic slingback, just has that nice black pointed toe, neutral color, and I just thought it would be neutral enough that I would still get a lot of use out of them. I really don't. I feel like the bow feels a little bit fussy on my foot and maybe it's that my style has changed a little bit and perhaps it's not quite as girly as it used to be. Um, but yeah, I always just feel like whenever I go to team them with an outfit that it would be better served with a plain and more simple pump. So I almost always change out of them. So I think maybe I need to experiment a bit more. Um, and again, this was another reason that I wanted to mention in this video. If you have these, let me know in the comment section below like what you like to team them with and kind of any go two outfit combinations. I would love the inspiration because yeah, I am not getting my money's worth out of these. They were very expensive. So I absolutely want to get that cost per wear down. And so far I definitely am not. So hopefully again, this is maybe one I can rescue, but at the moment it's still a little bit of dud for me. I wish I wore them more, but I just always seem to go for something a little bit more plain and simple. So that is it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below if you had any dud luxury purchases over the last year. I would love to hear about it, especially if I'm considering getting any of those items. So please let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.